Um, I'd like to thank our witnesses and uh, Dr. Le, uh, Conte, I've got a couple questions for you. And uh, I want to preface my questions with this. I, I, I truly hope that nobody will interpret from my line of questioning that I oppose uh, the bills before us today. I support what's happening, and I, I think these are important conversations that we're, hap we're having. But I do um, continually ask in my mind what our standard is and how do we know when we've crossed that standard and, and how do we not know. And when this hearing came up, I remember very clearly um, a subcommittee meeting of this sub subcommittee where we were considering the uh, Chicano Park Preservation Act. And I pointed out that the murals in this park were that we were protecting featured controversial figures like Fidel Castro. And I asked the NPS Deputy Secretary Vela to comment on the National Park Service's agenda to try, try to represent all people and did this concern them. And uh, the response was, within the narrative of the national parks, we tell a lot of stories and demonstrate a lot of images and narratives. Through educational interpretation, we're able to provide the visitors with a better understanding of why those images exist, why those exact statues exist, and enable them to an opportunity to develop their own thoughts as to the particular item they're looking at. Um, I asked the majority's witnesses on the bill a similar question and asked her to help me understand the possible comparisons such as today's statues. She said that there were, was little need for concern because there are more than 100 murals in the park that they were, only, they were only two featuring controversial people. If we use that same model, which I think we should, to be consistent, a quick Google search says that there are 16, 116 statues in the Washington, D.C., and probably thousands throughout the national park system. And so really the question I bring before the committee today is what is our standard so we'll know it when we see it, right? When we've crossed that line of, of when a statue should be removed and when it shouldn't, and how much in an individual's life um, at what level does it disqualify them to be honored for other accomplishments that they may have had? And doctor, I don't know if you, you could help me on that because I think it's important for this committee. We'll be here again, looking at other statues and other figures, and uh, they may or may not meet the, the high level that we're looking at those today of controversy. And I'm just kind of curious from your perspective, how you'd answer that question. Well, thank you. Uh... Uh, Ranking Member Curtis, for that question. It's a, it's a great question. I'll take a stab at it. Um, I mean, one of my real concerns is the uh, level of civic illiteracy. And I think it was Christy Coleman who referred to it, the ignorance of so many young people not even knowing what the Civil War was about, much less when it was fought. Same can be said for the First World War and the Second World War. Having taught students at the King's College there in New York City for a decade, it is really appalling the kind of civic amnesia that we have. So. Uh, on the one level, you can say that, you know, monuments can be a teaching moment. Every monument can be a teaching moment. How do you decide which one should be publicly displayed? Well, in terms of um, monuments that clearly are directing our hearts and minds to honoring an individual, that's one thing. What individuals do we want to honor in our public and civic life? Well, those who are defending the democratic principles that we all agree to. Freedom, equality, government by consent of the governed. If that individual is a defender of those principles, was a defender of those principles, then sure we want to honor that person. If the person is not a defender of those principles, I don't know that the answer is to take them out of the public square, but I do think the answer is certainly to give us the context, the historical, contextualize that person and use it as a teaching moment because the level of, of ignorance, civic ignorance about our own history is appalling. And what I'm increasingly worried about is if the ordinary young person can't even name the three branches of government, and we're hearing uh, surveys like that from Pew Forum and, and elsewhere. If you can't even name the three branches of government, you are more susceptible to propaganda. And I don't want to see that happen in, uh, in this country, and I think we're, we're running the risk of that. So contextualize the monuments rather than necessarily removing them from sight. Teach the history. Teach it honestly with integrity would be my, my encouragement if that's helpful. 